Hello YouTubers, it's me again. I'm just posting a shorter video of uh, me talking about uh, colors, how I make, uh, how I do the sky, and how I think and how nature actually creates the vividness and the colors in the in the sky. So, yeah, that is what I'm doing right now. So, painting that huge uh, landscape. Uh, so maybe you find my thoughts around this interesting. Um, yeah, and that's the point with that short video. It will be in a longer video which I'm making of the process of that big painting, but maybe this is interesting standing for itself or by itself. Anyway, remember to share my videos and subscribe to my channel and uh, all that shit, you know, if you like and donate and become a patron, there's links on my channel and uh, stay cool, until next time. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm building, as you see here, Linking the background or getting tired and then working for ten hours, I think. Uh, now I'm gonna paint here and now after a while I'll start to link the uh, the sky ground and um, sea together. How I do that is that I start first I start to get it right and then I start to go in with uh, smaller and smaller brush strokes to kind of make it glide into each other so it doesn't seem too hard. And that is very important if you're going to paint a landscape because especially when it's so far in there and I'm using a photograph so it's very easy for my eyes to get tricked into believing that it's a very hard line uh, and people tend to just push in some black and you know uh, stuff like that, but if you if you start looking, it is the same colors in a way, except from uh, a few uh, maybe brown, reddish ones that are in the rest of it. You just have to use more or less of the darker or lighter colors. So I guess that is what I'm trying to. Uh, and the reds and the greens and everything it's reflected in here so just have to keep on kind of building it so I have a small quite small photo and it's a big painting so it's quite hard to see but I might print some bigger ones Day. See here it's struck there and because there's some light behind here and this one probably comes from the low sun who hits here. The sun comes in from this way and uh, uh, no it doesn't come from that way actually so it hits from this way and in there. <laughs> it's evening, it's not morning. So. Got confused there for a second. Anyway. But since it's kind of greenish behind here, the red is becoming more present and has a complementary contrast. Actually, when it goes up there, the ground 
here because of the greens, you know, the, the reddish comes up, and when it goes over there and becomes more red, the light that hits over there is in a green spectrum compared to the reddish on the ground. So it's quite funny to know these things and see it, see how nature creates this beautiful light. And on this. I saw actually a video of a guy painting a landscape, some sky stuff, but the views were amazing, a million views on this. And he only used a few greys and blue, but the sky he created, it wasn't alive, it wasn't a real sky, it was just, uh, he didn't use any color. So it becomes so flat. And that is what differentiates a good painter or a classical painter from these people who are quite good to draw their landscapes so they are quite good to depict nature or well, not depict nature but depict the uh, draw it but they're not good to paint it they just if you're an amateur if you're not used to look at paintings and don't understand the different uh, how nature works, how the rainbow actually works, they are able to trick you into believing that it's a, it's a good landscape. But it isn't. It's just a cheap representation of a beautiful reality. And it annoys me because I hate I actually hate it. Uh, I I just I'm not impressed by it. I'm more impressed with a painting which is which is less uh, correct but more alive. And uh, for it to be alive, you have to learn how to use color. You have to understand how nature creates it. The sky isn't just blue with some nuances and, and some black under the nuances under the, uh, the shadow. It's a bobbling of color. It's the color that gives the light life. People ask me how I paint light, and I paint light in the same way as a rainbow paints light. Or nature paints. Different colors put up against each other. That was actually why I fell in love with painting in the beginning, because I was looking at the looking at the, um, I learned to see color instead of black and white and nuances and when I understood I learned it from a teacher called Sissel Kogosta she put me on the right track when I went to a drawing school and when I suddenly saw it I didn't see I never seen nature the same way after it kind of burst into color. And that was amazing. It was really beautiful. It was, uh, yeah. So when you look on the sky, try to look at the cloud and don't look at it as white, but try to figure out what color it is, what kind of blue is in the background, what color is in the shadow, what is happening to the shadow, what does it represent, how, how is it created. And the shadow is always a mix or representation of the, of the it's kind of a representation of the the color behind 
the cloud behind the, the white. If it's blue, it's orange or reddish, and it's a mix between those things in the shadows. So that is how you make the shadow come alive. That is why the, the spear of Rembrandt in the Night Watch kind of sticks out of the painting because they have used both both texture and um, and uh, primary colors up against each other to create that effect. And that is what makes it beautiful. So when you look at a, on a shadow that hits a wall or sun hits the wall and there's a shadow, try to see what color is in the bright part. What color is in the shadow that falls on, on the wall? And what color is in the object that the shadow comes from? Uh, and if you understand that, when you start to see it, you will never look at the look at the world in the same way. And it starts bubbling in color instead of neons. It's beautiful. I didn't see that before I started to paint or to look at it. And that is how uh, Goethe built his uh, color circle. And Rembrandt actually they did it without knowing the physics. But today we know the physics, how different elements create different colors. And yeah. Anyway, it's now six in the morning and I need to have some food, some food and write a little bit in my diary and try to get some sleep because I'm gonna to my Taekwondo training tomorrow. And my trainer side, Muhammadi, kick my ass. So I need to get some sleep first. <coughs> yep, yep, yep. <coughs>